and studying actually be fun. Kedi Barrett is going to tell us all about her interactions doing some studying on an iPad. Tell us all about this, Kedi. Special K herself joins us from Washington, D.C. Hey, Simon. So Apple has redone iBooks, and now they are offering these interactive textbooks. So the idea here is instead of just reading text and looking at pictures, you can interact with things like multiple choice quizzes. Uh, you can watch videos. You can zoom in on diagrams or look at an object in 3D and rotate it several different ways. So it's pretty cool. Um, and one of the features I really liked about iBooks textbooks are the ability to look at uh, study cards. And these are automatically generated from every term that is in your glossary. So if your book contains a hundred different terms in the glossary, you'll have a hundred study cards appear on your iPod's, iPad screen. And these look like those three by five cards that you might have spent hours making as a kid, you know, using your Sharpie and writing out all these different terms and definitions on the back. So they're all pre-made for you and you can just hold them up and use them and kind of study from them. So I thought that was a really neat feature. That is cool. I did spend unfortunate numbers of hours making those cards. Um, you know, Katie, one question I have for you is that um, when Kindles tried to do textbooks, you know, they felt like they needed a whole different size format and they came out with that bigger Kindle, which uh, they came with a monster-sized, jumbo-sized Kindle that was about this big. <laughs> yeah, that didn't do so well. It didn't do so well, but I'm wondering about just format and size in general, because obviously they had some legitimate reasons to think that textbooks need a different format, whereas Apple is trying to put them on the iPad. It sounds like you did notice that there were some glitches. I'm curious, how does the format fit? Because textbook pages are different than regular pages. Right. You know, I, I personally find reading on the iPad for long periods of time to be difficult. You know, it's, a, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing to hold. You have to lean it against something else. Um, in the sun, you basically can't read with the glare on the reflective screen. But as far as the size of the book itself, I found the pages, they're basically the size of a regular book page or a textbook page. So I didn't have trouble with that. And a lot of the interactive things that you look at, for example, a diagram, that will blow up and take up the whole screen when you uh, pinch or double tap on it. And so that kind of gives you a different format anyway. So you're really looking at the text and the images in a different way. So I, I don't doubt that others will come out with smaller versions of this. Um, maybe some might try a bigger version like Amazon did, but we all know that didn't do so well. Uh, so I mean, it has to be something you're able to put in a backpack or able to carry around with you easily. Not, not a, not a bla said, blackboard though, sized thing. But there were some things missing, right? You yes. said that, and I'm yes. curious about that. Yeah, so for example, uh, it, it crashed on me several times, and this was a big problem. Um, and another problem I found was that in, in certain sections of a book, for example, at the end of a chapter, you have some review questions. Now, this would be a perfect place for there to be a spot for you to tap and enter your answer into the review question. But there's no such capability right now. Or a lab that has a chart that you have to enter your results into a lab chart. Um, those were all blank, like they should be in a book. Um, but you're not sharing this book with anyone next year. You don't have to you know, erase your answers as you go. This is your book. You own it on your iPad. So why not be able to you know, tap and enter that data? There's not an integrated way to do that now. You could create a note which could go along with the book, but it's really not intuitive. And, uh, and so that's something they need to improve on. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they're watching right now and will be instantly on, on that. Um, question for you about the note cards. I always thought, and probably you did, Julia, that actually making out the note cards with, with, with the pen and the paper was actually part of the learning process. And uh, that, I mean, maybe I'm just dense or something, I mean, just like etching it out there, learning to spell the words. That really helped me. If they're already made, doesn't that take a chunk out of the, I, there is no learning going on because it's just presented? Yeah, you know, Simon, I had a teacher email me this morning and said the same thing. That's when kids learn when they're making out these note cards. I personally spent so much time making the note cards and concentrating on getting the, you know, writing just right and making it look nice that I spent more time making them and less time actually studying them. So in my experience, I would prefer to have the note cards all made up for me. But, you know, everybody learns differently. And uh, if you want to still make your own note cards, you know, go right ahead. We'll send you <laughs> no some three by fives. <laughs> good, good. I will, I'll be coming to steal Julia's Sharpies later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Special KSL, Katie Barrett with the Wall Street Journal in Washington, D.C.